Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Cleared Cast. I am Katie Keller, Editorial Commun Communications Manager with Clearance Jobs. You know me, but you don't know my guest. I'm really excited. We have the International Spy Museum back on the line with us. And this is Andrew Hammond. He is the historian and curator at the International Spy Museum. And today, I, our topic is actually uh, something really cool. It's about the new uh, pop-up exhibit that the International Spy Museum is currently holding. It's Codes, Ciphers, and Mysteries. NSA treasures tell their secrets. So some really cool artifacts. We're going to touch on a few of those today. Uh, the NSA exhibit is, uh, we're getting close um, to that closing. So uh, hopefully this will entice everybody to go check it out last minute. Uh, but Andrew, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Clarence Jobs, we love our secret squirrel espionage spy topics, so I'm really excited to have you on the line today. Um, so first, I thought, uh, tell us a little bit, because our audience may not know you, tell us about you. Um, you know, what interested you in everything espionage, and tell us a little bit about your role at the International Spy Museum. Sure. So at the Spy Museum, I'm, I'm the historian and curator um, and I'm one of the people that helps to interpret the artifacts that we have and to communicate those uh, insights to a variety of different audiences. And it's not hyperbole to say we have the world's greatest collection, biggest collection of espionage and intelligence related artifacts. And I'm very proud and humbled and honored to have the job of helping to try to communicate them to other people. Uh, and if you don't believe, if you don't believe me on the collection, look at the Guinness records book because it's in there. Amazing. Well, and so you, I believe started at the, your role there during the pandemic. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. It's actually a year ago today. So it's quite fitting that we are speaking. First of September was my, my first formal day on the job so that's me yeah. being here this is my one year anniversary <laughs> well happy anniversary <laughs> what a you. year to start uh so the biggest collection uh in the guinness world of uh book of world records people so go check that out so uh tell us uh a little bit about what interested you in sort of the topic the topics of espionage spy uh, intelligence, um, sort of the historical piece of that. What interested you? Sure. Yeah. Two, two main things. I think, I think initially when I was a, a, a young boy, I was one of those kids that was never away from the local library. So I remember getting a book out on uh, the tradecraft of espionage and I had a copy of the Jaws novel and I remember cutting out uh, an insert, you know, where you, it was like a secret compartment and then I taped sure. it all up. And then I learned other, other things like you open a drawer and then underneath with a bit of pencil, make a mark. And then when you come back, you can tell if someone's been opening or closing your drawer. So, so as a young boy, I was running a, a counterintelligence operation against my parents. Um, so that was the, that was the first one, um, and then as an adult, uh, I was in the Royal Air Force. I, I've done a number of different things over the past twenty years. Uh, one of them was being in the Royal Air Force. Nine eleven happened. I was in a military intelligence section. Uh, I felt like an actor in a play, but I didn't really fully understand the plot, or not as much as I wanted to. So I went back to school. But it can be traced back to that military intelligence section. Uh, and when I was there, there were other intelligence agencies there. There were other countries that were involved. Um, it was quite an interesting and dynamic place to work. And for that job, I went through uh, a clearance process that many of your listeners will be uh, familiar with or will be anticipating in the future. Sure. Uh, I, I think one of the most... Uh, for me, one of the coolest pieces would be that interagency collaboration and working with different countries and the diplomacy there and the different intelligence agencies sharing information. And 
Um, so yeah, very, very cool. So going through a security clearance, was, was that through the Royal Air Force? That was through the Royal Air Force, yeah. So, what is that? Is the process sort of similar to the uh, to the U.S. military, or are there some differences? Uh, I haven't went through the one in the states, but I can tell you a little bit more about the one that I went through. Sure. Um, lots of paperwork, mm. lots of interviews, uh, not just of me, but of you know the person that ran the youth club when i was when i was uh, a young boy those sorts of things so you know the usual things looking at my finances looking at my past history looking at um you know my you know whether or not everything added up properly uh with regards to me uh and i'm very thankful i came through the process and and had that position because that is directly related to me being here at the International Spy Museum. Sure, lots of paperwork, lots of fun questions to answer about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, very cool. So uh, tell us, uh, give us an overview of the new pop-up exhibit highlighting the National Security Agency. Um, again, it's almost your last chance to visit, so everyone should check it out, but tell us a little bit about it. Absolutely, so we're the 1st of September today, so the clock is counting down. Uh, so try to get yourself <laughs> over to the International Spy Museum and see this pop-up exhibit. Um, it's, you know, without a shadow of a doubt for me, it's fantastic. These artifacts are just incredible. I mean, I'm talking like artifacts that are involved in some of the biggest historical events and the past 500 years. So, for example, we have the purple analog number one, which for uh, the average person, it's basically something that was used to crack the Japanese diplomatic code in the run up to Pearl Harbor. Um, so that's one of the artifacts we have. We have the only one of its kind in the world, a B series Enigma machine, which was uh, we believe was used by the Nazi High Command. We have uh, one of my personal favorites is a Comanche code book. So people will be familiar with the, the Wind Talkers, the, the Navajo and the Pacific Theater. What's maybe less well known as the, the Comanche code talkers and the European theater. Uh, and a number of them were on the beaches in D-Day uh, on, on the first day in Normandy. So there's just these incredible artifacts and they're linked up to incredible stories uh, and just one more we've got this depth analyzer which basically to cut a long story short it was used to crack the japanese naval code which helped a smaller and less experienced u.s navy defeat the japanese at the battle of midway so we're talking about amazing artifacts that are caught up in fascinating stories Ama amazing pieces of world history. So uh, probably a great place to take the kids as well. Am I right? Yeah, great place to take the kids. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, ki kids love the Spy Museum. I mean, I'm a good example. Like uh, as a kid, that book on tradecraft, I mean, who doesn't love a good spy story or who doesn't love to learn more about the gadgets, the people, the stories involved in the world of international intelligence and espionage. Sure. So speaking of gadgets, uh, well, this is a two part question. So do you have sort of within Hollywood, obviously a lot of the spy stories are going to be embellished, but do you have a favorite Hollywood spy actor, espionage, secret squirrel? Who's your fave? Okay. <laughs> That's a good question, actually. Um, I mean, I think most recently I've really enjoyed Benedict Cumberbatch and the Imitation Game and also in The Courier, which we at the Spy Museum, we recently had a program on The Courier. Um, so I, I think that he's been knocking it out of the park in, in terms of portraying people that are caught up in the world of intelligence and espionage. And he's obviously a very talented actor. And I think that he's done a really great job in those two recent spy movies. 
Okay. And so second part to the question, uh, I'd love to hear within the entire International Spy Museum, what is your favorite place slash what is your favorite sort of gadget that you could share with the audience today? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think it, ch it changes depending on the day and the month, but one of the favorites that, that I really love is a silver cigar box. So besides the fact that I'm partial to a stogie myself, um, th it's the story behind a cigar box. So and back in 1917, 1918, there was a British diplomat called Bruce Lockhart, and he was the British ambassador to the Bolshevik revolution. But what the subplot to this is, he was also caught up in a plot to try to uh, overthrow the, Bolsh the Bolshevik regime. Um, and this plot, the Lockhart plot, not many pieces of evidence exist to prove that it went on. But this cigar box is from one of his main accomplices, a guy called Sidney Riley, the so-called Ace of Spies. And this cigar box, it says along the lines of, in memory of the events that we took we took part in, in Moscow in 1918. So that cigar box can take you back. You know, to me, these artifacts, sometimes it's like a way to time travel. You just take a moment, be still, think about the artifact, go back to where it was, and you can go back to a different place in time. And think about that, the Bolshevik revolution. So if the Bolshevik revolution uh, hadn't been successful, the whole history of the 20th century could have been different. So the cigar box is just, to me, it's very special. And it's not one that many people spend a lot of time at, um, but it's really, really special. And spoken like a true historian, tra time traveling because of this artifact. But you're, it's so true. You know, the some of these events, uh, I think, especially some of the maybe not well-known events, to the general public or folks who aren't as versed in uh, sort of the spy knowledge, um, history could have looked, or, you know, the future could have looked uh, a ton different. So uh, tell us any other special uh, programming pop-up exhibits that you could tease to today for our audience. Yeah, we always have just amazing programs taking place. Our adult education team and youth education team are phenomenal. Uh, the adult education team next week, we have a program on uh, the rise and fall of Osama bin Laden. So just before the 20th anniversary of 9-11, um, they've always got great programs going on. Youth education, uh, tom tomorrow we've got a teacher's workshop looking at 9-11 and the intelligence angle. So we are constantly finding ways to connect the past and the present by using our collection and using our specialized knowledge in this area. So, so those are two of the things that are going on. Uh, and further down the line, we're working on some uh, future temporary exhibits, but you know, the museum's only been open a couple of years. We were open, we were going gangbusters and then the pandemic began, uh, but we're back open again. So many listeners, many people out there won't have engaged with our core historical uh, permanent exhibition, please come and see it. There's uh, amazing stories there. Years of work and thought uh, went into creating all of this. Everything was thought through the space, the artifacts, the stories, how they link up to bigger themes. So please come, you'll find amazing gadgets, amazing stories, uh, and you'll come away a little bit more enlightened about the world of intelligence and espionage. Sure. And especially our young adults out there, our Gen Z, who may be interested in national security careers or any of this secret squirrel stuff, um, you know, coming up on the uh, 20th anniversary of 9-11, uh, it, it, it may be a good time to, you know, learn a little bit about, you know, around the time when you were born, what was happening in the world, um, especially the intelligence piece, you know, sort of 
what the world looked like. Hindsight is a little bit 2020 when it comes to that event, but um, that that's uh, I know I know a lot of programming going on, especially in the in the national capital region. Well, excellent. So last, well. Yeah, maybe the last question. Uh, so uh, I always love to highlight other podcasts. Uh, the International Spy Museum has their own uh, spy cast, and you're the host. So tell us, favorite episodes, any coming up that folks should really keep their eyes peeled for? Yeah. Um, so spy cast, it's been running for 15 years, which in podcasting terms is like, you know, back to the time of the pyramids. <laughs> so it's been it's been there a long time. We're coming up on our fifteenth anniversary. We're coming up on our five hundredth episode. So there's a lot of episodes to choose from. In the past year, I really loved the. We had an episode on Juneteenth, um, and we had three African Americans talking about uh, an African American spy from American history. I you know, as a as a host, but also as a listener, I really appreciated what our guests had to say there. Coming up for 9-11, we've actually got a, a sort of mini special where we're going to drop a podcast based on an interview with each of the presidential daily briefers for George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and Dick Cheney's uh, advisor, Scooter Libby. So they're all going to be coming out uh very soon so yeah we've got we've got a huge back catalogue if anybody's uh you know if you're in prison or if you're like really uh you know looking for something that's going to take you months to do we've got a huge back catalogue but um those are some of my recent favorites some of the older favorites are there's one episode where the various historians and curators before me talk about their favorite artifact so that's another one that I particularly enjoyed as a listener. Wow, tons to listen to uh, prison or if we go back into quarantine, you have some options. Uh, I'm really interested to hear the uh, advisors to that administration. Um, that's going to be a really interesting ep episode, I'm sure. Um, so a lot of stuff to look forward to. Well, any uh, secret squirrel? So our mascot is a secret squirrel, if you're not aware. That's why I keep saying secret squirrel. We have a ton of swag. <laughs> you are looking for some secret squirrel merch. But any um, knowledge you want to hit our secret squirrels that are listening with as we close out? Uh, do you just mean more generally? Yeah, tell to... us. Yeah, tell sure. us any, any secret, just any facts you want to leave us with. Sure. Um, well, one of the things that I studied once upon a time was the Soviet-Afghan war. So Afghanistan, obviously, this that's, that war, that post-9-11 war has now finished. Um, I guess one thing that I would encourage uh, viewers and listeners to do is to look at some of the analogies between the Soviet drawdown in Afghanistan in 1989 and what's happening now. Um, and with historical analogies, there's always like ways that you can, you know, be lazy and, and, and not um, think through the, the, the similarities and the differences properly. But I think that that will be quite instructive for a lot of people just to just do a little bit of research, look at the Soviet experience in Afghanistan, the Soviet drawdown in Afghanistan, and then compare that to the American one uh, and Listeners and viewers can draw their own conclusions. And just to close out, longest war in the history of the United States, Afghanistan. Longest war in the history of the Soviet Union, Afghanistan. Well, and in today's world where everybody thinks they're a uh, geopolitical guru, uh, they need to actually do their research. So, yes, very, very great point, Andrew. Everyone, this is Andrew Hammond. He is the curator and historian at the International Spy Museum. So go check out their latest pop-up exhibit. It ends September 30th, so go. It's highlighting the National Security Agency and some of their really cool artifacts. And to learn more intelligence breaking news, other spy history, you can visit news.clarencejobs.com. <laughs>